So thank you again for joining us. Um, just to let you know that we will be recording this session so that we can post it on uh, YouTube and uh, to the link to the portfolio webpage so that you can see it in the future or refer back to it with questions you may have while you're uh, putting together your portfolio. Um, so my name is Wahida Ilasari. I manage the advising office. And with us today, we have um, two of our professors, Professor uh, Teresa Lucy, who is our drawing area person that will be talking to you about the drawing requirements. And then we have Professor Debbie Starr, who will be talking to you about the design portion and the requirements for the uh, design area. We also have Marlene Augustini with us. She is our um, advisor. And we have two new advisors, Jillian Eckel and uh, Yumi Wolfgang. Uh, also, Karen Lin is on the uh, call with us today. She is our um, front desk person. So when you guys email us or call us, more than likely you'll be reaching out or talking to her first. And then we have Hannah Estes with us. She is our marketing coordinator who put this uh, uh, Zoom link and everything else together for us. So thank you all and welcome. So today's agenda, we will have just an overview from the advising standpoint and what you should be knowing and um, getting ready for for portfolio. Then we'll turn it over to Teresa and then uh, Debbie, then we'll open it up for questions. So we will have questions answered at the um, end of the presentations. So with that, I will go ahead and get started. Let me see after all this to make sure I can share, share my screen. All right. So we can all see the first slide, right? Yes. All right, yes. perfect. So again, welcome to the SVAD Studio Art Portfolio Review. All right, so the requirements to submit this portfolio and who should be submitting this portfolio. The studio art portfolio is actually required for students who are pursuing the art BA studio track, the studio art BFA, and the studio art minor. Experimental animation students who are in a previous catalog year, which is uh, 2021 or prior, can also submit this portfolio. Um, however, we strongly, strongly encourage all of the emerging media BFA pending students who are who, want, who are wanting to pursue experimental animation to please reach out and speak with an advisor regarding the uh, portfolio options that you have. Um, to be able to submit the portfolio, you must have completed with the CR Better Drawing 2, ART 2201. Uh, sorry, Design 2D, um, 2201, um, Design Fundamentals 3D, which is R2203, uh, Drawing Fundamentals 1, ART2300, or Drawing um, 2, which is ART2301 at UCF. You may have completed these courses at another institution, and the numbers and names may be different, but to submit the portfolio, you will have to have those completed um, prior to this semester. Uh, students who are enrolled in Art History 1 and 2 can submit the portfolio this semester, um, but at the end of the semester, you would have to have a grade of C or better. Um, it's your passing the portfolio is contingent upon those grades. Uh, transfer students who are not currently enrolled at UCF and is wanting to submit the portfolio. When you submit that portfolio, you would have to also upload your unofficial transcript. It could be unofficial. We do not need an official copy. Um, and you can upload this during the registration process for the portfolio. All right, important dates to remember or to know, Monday, September 19th through uh, Thursday, September 29th at 11.59 p.m. is when you can submit the portfolio. Um, it's an online process. I have another slide that will actually show you where you would go and um, submit the portfolio. We will be uh, sending you your results. It will be emailed to, to you all by uh, 5 p.m. at least on Monday, October 12th. Um, and it will be emailed to the email address that you enter during your registration for the, portfolio, for the actual portfolio. If you are a UCF student, we ask that you use your night's email to register. Um, submit your portfolio online. So the portfolio, again, this semester is online. It might change in the future, but for this semester, we're keeping it online. 
All images must be submitted at the time that you apply or submit your portfolio. You're not going to be able to log in and out and make changes. So once you go in and start your portfolio application online, you would have to have all of your um, images ready to upload. Just uh, note that the file naming structure must be followed so that the system will recognize what you're loading um, in the system. And so we have, again, I'll show you another slide where you can find the examples of how you need to uh, um, name your images. But basically, please follow that naming um, instruction that we have. So the best advice that we can give you um, when you're submitting this portfolio is to have all your documents ready and in a file in the correct format and then start your application process and then you can just upload your files as you start or as you continue your process. When you go to the portfolio website, there is uh, currently a link that says registration is currently closed and will open on September 19th. So basically on uh, the 19th, you will be able to click that link and start your submission process. Um, also review the area here that says, what work should I put in my portfolio? Again, um, our two faculty will go over the drawing and design requirements, but this is where you can find detailed information on what you're needing to submit. And then the, how do I submit my portfolio? Again, here's the naming structure. We definitely want you all to follow this so that your um, images can be uploaded correctly. We typically get a lot of questions on what does the last name drawing all mean or design all mean, design 2D all, design 3D all. Basically that one image or that one file that says um, design all will be um, one image with all of your drawing examples in it. Um, the same thing for the design all, 2D design all and 3D design all. So again, please pay attention to how you're naming your files. It will not upload properly if you're not following the naming structure. Okay, for the advising portion, that's all we have. Again, this is our um, portfolio website. You can find all the information there. Uh, design questions can be addressed to Professor Starr, drawing questions to Professor Lucy. And then we have a general portfolio um, email address you can send your emails to and we will respond to that. And then if you have just general questions about, you know, have I completed the appropriate courses or not, just send us an unofficial transcript if you're not a UCF student to SVAT advising at ucf.edu, and we will be able to um, answer your questions for you. So with that, I will stop and then we will turn it over to Professor Lucy. Okay, hello everyone. Share my screen. Okay, can everyone see SVAD Studio Art Portfolio Review? Yes? Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking about the drawing portion. Okay, so for submitting your drawings, you're gonna to need to submit five. Those can come from Drawing Fundamentals 1 and Drawing Fundamentals 2 or an approved equivalent course. Two to three of the works must be figurative. So that means that it could be from the model or a self-portrait or even the skeletons that we use in our program. Students are asked to select drawing work that showcases their ability to use formal elements and principles such as measure, proportion, structure, line quality, contour, contrast, volume, one and two point perspective, value, and the figure. Uh, for this review, drawing is defined as work done in a traditional physical media, so not digital. It must be on paper. All works must be created from observation, not from photographic reference. We're gonna go over some examples of work that um, has come from our program, and then we'll go over some passing examples that may come from equivalent courses from other universities. Okay, so this would be a drawing that would pass portfolio review. It has value, it has good line quality, it shows volume, it shows correct proportion, correct perspective, and structure. Um, if you are not familiar with the drawing program at UCF, uh, we have a very 
structured way of uh, describing the form very deliberately. Um, this would be an example of that. This would be a very highly rendered uh, drawing, but let's go over some other uh, drawings that are very different that would also pass the portfolio review for the drawing section. Okay, so here's a drawing of a cow skull. Uh, the line quality is good. This is a contour line. It shows uh, the planal structure of the form. It uses only line to describe this. Uh, it is almost like a, like a linear tattoo, very simple, uh, but the line quality doesn't have any sketching. There's no breaking apart of the lines. Uh, it shows volume. The proportion is accurate. It's in perspective. You can see that um, you can see more than one side to this object so that all of the information is diagonal. There's not a horizontal line at the bottom where the jaw is. It's showing that one jaw is diagonal from the other. Uh, so this drawing uh, is in perspective accurately. This would be another example. This would also count as figurative work. So yet again, you're seeing uh, line quality. The line quality um, isn't only uh, crisp and structured, it is also describing forms that aren't nameable. So not just eyes, nose, and mouth or something simple like a cartoon. We're really trying to describe uh, what this object looks like in life. So we're showing almost too much information in the vertebrae and the planal structure in the face. This would be a passing example of a homework drawing of one of our skeletons. It's adding some graphic interest uh, with the red pencil. Yet again, this is a simple contour drawing. There's no tone. There's some accidental tone, but there's no decorative tone, um, no shading, right? So um, just a simple drawing showing all of these structured lines, asking intelligent questions with your pencil uh, to find the correct proportion of the object that you're drawing. This would count as figurative work, a self-portrait. So uh, it has good line quality, volume, proportion. Uh, yet again, uh, you can see them using straight lines to ask questions about the form. Uh, this would be a drawing that would pass as well. This shows atmospheric perspective. Uh, it's showing that the process of drawing is more important than the product of drawing. You can see all of those kind of underpinnings. We kind of prize uh, people that can draw like surgeons and draw like architects because we want to see um, not just the answer, but how you got it, right? So like in a math class, we're not going to just have you fill in the blank. We want to see how you got the answer. So this has good line quality, proportion, accurate perspective, structure, and this would count as a figure drawing as well because of the self-portrait on the right-hand side. Yet again, Right, broken record. These are all very different drawings, but they all uh, show that they understand the concepts of the courses, right? So accurate, uh, good line quality, very crisp, no sketching, no hairy back and forth lines, uh, almost pinstriped on there. Um, it shows volume, proportion, perspective, structure, and figure. If you can see more than one side to a box, there are no horizontal lines. There are only vertical and diagonal lines. This would also affect a three-quarter view of the human skull or any three-quarter view, All right? Line quality, simple contour drawing, proportion, right? Um, we're looking to see if, you know, if the human head is... Um, bigger than the pelvis. That's something that people typically will do in the drawing classes when they're struggling with proportion that they'll make like the head too big or something like that. Um, so accurate proportion, uh, the structure, right? The planal structure, if you look at the skull or if you look at the face, it's almost like a geode, but kind of in a more organic way that we're overly describing the planal structure of the object. This would also count as figure, right? It has a human skeleton in it. So if maybe a self-portrait or something more tonal isn't your forte, but you've got some really good, simple contour drawings of the vertebrae of the spine on the human skeletons, you could include that in your portfolio and that would count uh, for your figurative requirement. It's also showing the perspective of the ladder at the bottom, how all of the diagonal rungs of the ladder are not parallel. They're actually going off to a vanishing point. 
So we're, we're looking for intelligent drawings like this. Yet again, another example of a simple contour drawing that would also uh, suffice for your figurative requirement. Here's another one. So for tone, a flat graphic shape, right? Something as simple as just a jet black shape would count for a tonal example. Um, yet again, we're dealing with crisp contour line, a clear understanding of that concept, uh, proportion. You can see them using a red pencil to try to correct for the issues of volume happening uh, with this rib cage. They're trying to get it into perspective. Uh, is it completely accurate? No, but it's still a beautiful drawing, right? So here we have more painterly applications of um, uh, charcoal to the surface, right? So uh, a little more wishy-washy with the uh, uh, willow charcoal, not as structured as some of the drawings before, but these are accurate drawings that would completely pass the portfolio review uh, self-portrait series. Gestures, right? Uh, so the good thing about gesture drawings is you can do a lot of them, uh, but maybe only one out of 10 or 20 would be any good. But if you've got a really killer gesture drawing like this uh, that really describes the three dimensionality of the form, why not include that as your figurative um, uh, portion of your review? Uh, I hesitate uh, to include gestures unless they are an exception like this. Yet again, uh, this is a more tonal uh, drawing than the examples previous to it. Uh, we have something that would count for the figurative element. It's structural, clear understanding of the difference between positive and negative space. You can see that the shape of uh, the, the windows between the ribs are being drawn just as accurately as the ribs themselves. Uh, good structure, good proportion. This is our, our self-portrait that we we'll use typically in our drawing one or two classes at UCF uh, to elongate the shape and make it easier for students to kind of access uh, the form. You can see a, what we call a ghost or um, evidence shifting on the left. Uh, how many times did they draw that? No, it was two or three times. We prize that at UCF, so don't feel like if there are mistakes on the page that it's something that you shouldn't include. We want to see that you uh, are not afraid to shift and change these things. Um, sometimes your first idea is not your best idea, and we're looking for people uh, that will notice that and act upon it. Okay, so here's an example of something that wouldn't be typical from our program necessarily, uh, this might be something more typical from Valencia or any uh, university that you may um, have had uh, if you're a transfer student, right? You might have work that looks more similar to this. Uh, this would also pass portfolio review because I can see that it wouldn't take a lot of time and effort for this student to um, kind of take that tone away and restructure and show the planal structure of the form. The reason we have you guys overemphasize the planal structure is so we can set you up uh, to describe light and shadow in the same way uh, that all the midtones have specific shapes, all of the uh, darkest darks, all of the highlights are, are separate in their planal structure. Um, it is not a big leap of faith uh, to have this person pass the portfolio review, uh, I believe that they would be ready for an intermediate drawing class. So similarly, this would be a more tonal, um, less structured, a little more sketchy uh, example that may come from outside of our program. But I see that the box is in perspective, right? I can see more than two sides to that, um, that uh, vertical rectangle, right? There are no horizontal lines. Uh, good. So that's in perspective. And I don't see them lining up their highest point with their lowest point, leftmost point with their rightmost point, which is something people will typically do when they draw from their imagination. Uh, structure of the cow skull is sound enough that I would trust this person uh, to be able to pick up the information really quickly in the intermediate drawing class. 
And here we have a very highly rendered example of something more tonal that may come from outside of this university. Yet again, uh, this uh, it wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like I was doing a disservice to this student um, by allowing them to take the intermediate as their first class at UCF, because it already appears that they understand the concepts of both drawing one and drawing two. And I'm going to pass this off to Professor Debbie Starr. Okay. Debbie, you're muted. Okay. It's, I'm trying to just bring my slide up. And right now it is in full gear, so I have to bring it back down again. All right. So if you give me a minute, because I have to bring it in. I have one screen, so I'm dragging back and forth between things. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. Can you see this now? Can't move it. All right. I have to kind of switch them around. Can you see that now? Yes. All right. All right. Perfect. Same thing again. We have the um, title for this and 2D design. We're asking students to provide three images for 2D design. They're going to be works that have you know, you're going to have three separate images and you're going to have that all group picture together again. So you're going to remember to take three picks, three separate pictures for three separate items and then one picture with all of them together to load. OK. We're asking pretty much for two of them to be black and white and one color or we can have one black and white or one color theory and then the other one can be somewhat color as well. But your color is not just going to be picking a colored picture. It's going to show that you've had some color theory practice. Example. So here is a black and white image. These were done with tape. Uh, some classes use Cricut machines, things like that. This can be done in pen and ink, depending on whatever school, but it's about line, form, and balance, proportion. You know, so you also have a um, repetition, scale, unity, variety. So if you're going to cover in this portfolio, basically principles and elements of design, but they are all from your foundation classes. These are not sketches in design. You're not drawing in design. Design is really about creating a finished product. Okay. There's another view. It's still, you know, they set this up, understanding the rule of thirds, things like that as well, too, your proportion, unity trying to work on some of these projects. And these are for the black and white. So here we have stipple. I have other things in my class where they work in lines, dots and dashes, and they create the form by not outlining it like a cartoon. So it becomes more like an illustration set up in pen and ink. Here also, this is the same thing. Someone did this with lines, dots and dashes. They knew the rule of thirds. They create, they spent a lot of time on this. It works very well. It's a good design layout. And that's what we're looking for. So none of these are exercises. You're not doing uh, four boxes with squiggly lines and, and giving me an exercise. You're giving me a finished item here. You see that? So same here, showing that they understood how to create that value without just shading it. And they work from items that they see, but maybe are, these can be from photographs. They are working for that, but they're not copying the photograph. They have to interpret it, not as a photograph, but in lines, dots, and dashes. Some classes don't have this. I mean, some schools do do stipple, some don't, but the thing is that you need to remember that your projects are all gonna be foundation. So it might be about shape. It might be about texture or value, okay? You're going to see different things. This here was sort of collage work that they had done with papers and fabrics and created this black and white image. 
but it's it's not a scanned picture. I mean, this is actually physical. They put together, you know, they glued it together. Still shape. Here's another one. This one printed out zillions of paper with text on it and then reassembled it to create their own self portrait. Still black and white, great grayscale. Okay. Painting that people, there are classes that only do them with acrylic paint, so it's a black and white, but it's a value. This would not be considered co theory. This is a value project. Okay. Also playing around with light as well. Changing their, their background so it's not just a flat, solid background. Showing that they've also understood the principles and elements in design. Hopefully that we've already covered that. Here we also do shapes. We have a shape project as well. And they can be, it's almost like setting up a kaleidoscope. I know in my own personal classes, I have one where we use recognizable objects. So they're recognizable representational objects, but they have to use it in a way that is non-representational. They're using it for shape, not to tell a story. So it's balance. A lot of it is balance, texture, shape, overlapping, different kinds of balance, asymmetrical, touching, convergent, closure, movement, all of the things that you can do with shapes. Here's another one, another example. They're also using like the rule of thirds and giving you movement in the, in the part, you know, the picture. So it's not just a solid stagnant standing like somebody's got a picture in the center of the page, but they thought about this as a whole because we also go over the Gestalt principles and things like that too. So hopefully where, if you don't have it, I get it, you know, but we could always look at what you do have. Another example, strictly black and white, bigger ground. Color, when we get into color, there's a very, a lot of different ways to do it. Some places use the CMYK setup, some people will do the RGB, but you're showing that you've had some kind of color knowledge, right? So it's, if you show that you've worked on something and it shows color theory, that's acceptable. If you just, like I said before, if you just take a picture and you just randomly color it, the, what you saw from a photograph, that's not gonna, it's not gonna be enough. You know, you need to show color theory. So example, there are a lot of them this way where each one of these sections is another color scheme. So they break it down here. They have it broken down here. It's not necessary that they have to have these parts, they, but they have to show that they've had some color theory background. Sometimes it's set up like this, you know, it could be four separate images like that it can be and it doesn't have to be laid out like this. It could be two on top, two on the side. Maybe you only have two of them, but you want to show that you did work with color theory. Just putting in one monochromatic image doesn't always pass it because that's value. And we want to see that you've worked with color. Okay. So you might have a monochromatic and then one other one together, and that would work. It's another one, the four separate color schemes. been done this way as well for students here and for people that have come in from other schools. I know that I've seen this done in a lot of different places, but you're still working with color theory here. Same here. Same here. So for those two the items, you really want to make sure you have black and whites to choose from images and that you have something that's color that's got color theory going on for it. And those are what we're putting in for 2D design. Now for 3D. Now, one of the things that I've seen people do is like you take up one item and you take three pictures of the same item in different poses and load those up. It doesn't work that way. You need to have three separate three dimensional items. Right. Then you're going to also have that one picture with all three of them together. So make sure you keep them. 
So this is just an example of representational. So it has texture, it has line, it has shape, it has volume, those kind of things we're looking for with three-dimensional work as well. That would be considered their representational. This one also is a representational. Now this one, I know it, sound, it looks like they went crazy, but this was before we had laser cutters, okay? So someone sat and cut this by hand and built hinges on it and a lot of other things. So, but it's showing that they had good craftsmanship, but it also shows its design. Something like this, line, light, balance, contrast, repetition, harmony, variety. These are things, this was someone's example where they had looked at an umbrella and came up with this idea. It's really three-dimensional. None of the work is digital. All of it will be, you're gonna take a photograph of this and put this in, but you're photographing your own work. It's not gonna be a flat, there's no digital drawing of these items. For example, we have here, we, we kind of tend to push it this way. So we have one representational item, one abstract item, and then one non-representational item. So when you take each one of these would be separate individual drawing of uh, photographs for the, for the portfolio, and then one where they would have all of them together. Now, the one that you have them all together does not have to be professionally done. You can sit it on a table. It can be, you know, that you're just showing you have all three of those items. Here's another example where they had done this one first for the representational, this was the abstract, and then this was the non-representational. So if you don't have those, but you have three separate items that you made in a 3D class, you have to show all three of them, not just pick one, okay? Here, every once in a while we have classes that I like to make them Halloween-based. But it's also showing, like, even when you're photographing, you want your photographs to look good. You don't want them to look like, and I don't want to see bed sheets or Laura Ashley wallpaper or, or that you've taken it on the ground outside of the parking lot. Let's put in a picture that shows that you cared about your art, okay? And that's it for this. Okay. Are we good? We're good. All right. Awesome. So we'll start answering the questions that you have. Um, there's some in the chat we'll get to. You can also um, uh, put your um, hands up in the reactions, I think it's found, and then we'll get to your questions that way too. Um, all right, let's start here. So there's a drawing question. For the drawing submissions, do we have to do them in a certain medium, like pencil or charcoal? So typically, um, we uh, in our program have all of our drawings in charcoal. We have used graphite in the past, especially uh, when we're sharing certain rooms. So uh, very recently, I think it was last spring, we had a few drawing classes that only used uh, graphite. That's fine, as long as the other elements are there um, that uh, you have good line quality, that you have good proportion, good perspective, stuff like that. Um, uh, we'll forgive uh, some lighter graphite, but you want these things to be impactful and you want them to be visible from a bit of a distance. Uh, we don't want precious little kind of like high school sketchbook, like number two pencil drawings. We we use the charcoal because it is so dark and it has a lot of contrast and you can you can view it from across the room and it's impactful, as I said, right. Thank you. Uh, Naomi is asking, I'm at, I am currently taking 3D art at the, at the moment and I am in the process of making my second 3D piece. Can I still submit what I have for my portfolio? Naomi, you'll have to wait until next semester to submit your portfolio. We have to wait until all those courses, your 3D is completed um, before you're able to submit. But you will be able to submit it in the spring semester. Uh, Joshua, yes, Joshua, please put your microphone on and ask your question, that is fine. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I have a bunch of questions, but I'll just I'll I'll break them up so we don't so uh, people will get their turn. So people will get their turn. Um, do we keep where we write homework drawings on the bottom left corner of the drawing, or do we erase it? Um, you do not have to write that it's a homework specific drawing. Um, if you're Professor, if you're currently enrolled in a drawing class and somebody is telling you to do that, please continue to do that. Uh, that doesn't have any um, effect on the portfolio review, though. We're just looking for good drawings that'll pass the pro uh, pass the review itself. Okay, and I'm guessing that we keep our last name and date on them. Uh, you'll be submitting these digitally, so I assume that your name will be a part of that online submission process. No, I mean, I mean the drawings. Do we keep the date and and last name on the drawings? That would be something uh, that your current drawing professor would. That would be a question for them. But for as it pertains to this review, that's irrelevant. We're looking it's for um, we're looking for good drawings. You'll have your name on your application for the review. Okay, so. Um... I'll do this last question, then I'll give some people another chance, and then I'll go to my other questions later. If we have drawings hanging up in the SVAD building, will they be taken down in time before the first day of the submissions, or are they going to stay up there for the rest of the semester? If you have good example drawings hanging in uh, upstairs or downstairs in the faculty hallway, you can uh, come into the drawing office whenever I'm teaching. I'm there four days a week, and uh, I can... Uh, or, or if you feel like just taking your drawings down, you can take just your drawings down. But if they're high up and you need a step ladder, you can always come and get me and uh, I'll help you get your drawings down so you can use them for your submission. Okay, so no one get in trouble if, uh, if I no. just take them? No, if they're your drawings, <laughs> sure. Okay, I'll, I'll stop here and I'll give some other people a chance before I get, go to my other ones. Thank you. Okay. There's um, a question from Isabel. I did a time-based sculpture using perishable items. Am I not allowed to use that because I don't have it anymore? Um, uh, do you have images of it? Debbie, is, is, are they able to use images of it? Yeah, are there photos of it? Isabel? Yeah, I have photos of it because um, it, was, it was made from fruit, so it rotted. <laughs> Um, but I have photos of it when it started and when it um, rotted, and I don't have it on anymore because it rotted. But right. for the for the now, all three image, all three sculptures are are made out of the same fruit group. No, it, it's just one of them. But um, yeah. but since we have to have to, that picture of having all the sculptures, am I not allowed to use that? Uh, I. I don't know if it will help you. I mean, you might be missing something in one of those items. You know, maybe you might have to put a picture of that with the other two items. But you need to show that you have, that those are yours. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's a no then. No, I didn't say no. Can they include photographs along yes, yes. with their three to eight? Okay, it, yeah. Right. If you have two other items that are three, two, full standing items and you put the photograph of the fruit one with it it'll still show me that you have you know that it's okay. yours yeah. i just want to see your fruit picture and then somebody else submits something and they have your fruit picture too yeah yeah okay, okay. uh chloe is asking for 2d design it needs to be physical and not digital as well right it needs to be that something that you created you're not creating them digitally um you're not going into a photo shop and just creating it in photoshop or going into photo paint and painting it online these are not digital projects they're ink paper paint you know you physically have to do it you know all right but me we'll take your question and then we'll go back to the chat one i just had two questions really fast um the first one was i think early on when you were talking about some um submitting from an outside class, so I'm from Valencia, and you said I would have to resubmit my transcripts. Um, does that, I just have to like request them from Valencia and then submit them to you, like the are, art program? Are you a current UCF student or no? 
No, I'm. I've just applied in August, so they're still okay. getting everything together. Yes. Um, yeah. So just up, upload your unofficial transcripts when you submit your portfolio. There's a space for it there. Okay, and it it does take a few weeks. Will that affect? Un the unofficial, you should be able to get from your Atlas account. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, lastly, just for the design three D portion. Do they all, because I know a lot of the example pictures were similar, like the representationally abstract and the non-representational all kind of had a theme. Is it okay if they're all three separate? Yes, because I'm, I am quite aware that some schools don't do that at all. And mm -hmm. but they're not teaching you classification. They're just letting you make three separate items and you can load them. But it needs, you still have to, you know, have that photo with the three of them together as well. Right. But okay. then you have to put all, you know, and they have to be separate. I mean, I, for example, uh, one year we had someone make a, a skull, a head out of mm -hmm. clay, and they photographed it face on. Then they paint, did a picture of the side, one side and the other side, and they loaded those three images of the one object. And that's not what I want to see. I want to see mm -hmm. three separate things. Okay. And then, I'm sorry, I think she one more question really fast. Um, you said that you prefer the UCF email if we had it, but I, yeah. I'm currently not a UCF student. Yeah, if you're not, you can use your, your another email. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Yep, yeah, not a problem. All right, going back to the chat, a mess, uh, email or a question from Kathleen. Even if we are currently in art classes or have not taken certain classes, should we still attempt to submit a portfolio? Um, Kathleen, I would recommend that you do not submit the portfolio if you do not have the drawing one, drawing two, 2D and 3D completed. So wait until you have those completed and then you can submit the semester after. Uh, Viviana is asking, we need a picture of all three, all three 3D works together at once. So that's one question. Or separate pictures, that's the second question. You're going to have um, three separate individual, you're going to have individual pictures of each item. Because you're going to have four section, four things like you go to 3D, it's going to ask you about those three sculptures that you have, but it's going to give you a space and it's going to go space one, you know, draw sculpture one or 3D number one in there. And then it's going to give you the three sections to put your individual images up. And then the last one's going to say that all 3D and that's going to be the picture. So you're going to need four photos in total, one for each project that you had made, and then one that just shows all three of them together. Okay. Viviana had continued to say that my non-representational, I have pictures of it by itself, but not, uh, but I, but do not have, but do not still have that one. Well, that's what we just went over with right. something else. So that's, it. okay. yeah. Uh, Isabella says here, yes, I was wondering what students who no longer have access to their projects should do with all with the all photo. Well, you, you can either put lay in the pictures there, but uh, you don't have any of the projects. And what are you loading? Isabella. You have two of them. Okay, she just put it in the chat. I do okay. not have one. I do not have anymore, but I have the pictures. Okay, so you're going to load the two. You're going to put a picture in for the, the other one. I mean, all of them are going to be photographs anyway for the first three. And then on the end, you're going to put your two that you have together, the standing with the one that you have a picture of. And let's look at it. Crystal Jackson, are there any other examples of the 3D design other than the houses? Uh, there were examples just on there. There was a, a genie bottle, there was a clock tower. There, they have other, there are other things, people, other classes. Some make shoes, some make chairs. You know, each class has something different. Someone's asking if this meeting will be available to view afterwards. Yes, it will be. Uh, we just need to give um, uh, Hannah some time to clean it up and then we will post it to this at the, to the portfolio website. 
Um, Isabel is asking, can we use acrylic paintings for the drawing portion as long as they have the principles and elements they are looking for? I think acrylic would be going too far. Um, sometimes we use wet mediums in the drawing rooms, but it's usually ink wash or very occasionally someone will use gouache uh, to kind of pick the highlights back out if they're using good paper. Uh, most of our projects, not really projects, most of our drawings uh, in the drawing room are on newsprint paper, so they can't take wet mediums. But if it's an entirely acrylic uh, piece that's a painting it wouldn't be uh, appropriate for the drawing portion but if you did like an acrylic wash and you did a drawing on top of it if the drawing outweighs the painting it's a drawing but you're gonna have to gauge that um, I would I would stay away from it unless it's like a, a really delicate wash thank you uh, Melissa is asking, so all the sculptures um, have to be physically next to each other? In that last picture, in this fourth one picture. Has all. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm in a previous catalog and I wanted to know if that would affect my portfolio submission for the spring process. Um, Naomi, you probably want to email us about advising on your question. Um, it doesn't matter what catalog year you're in, uh, you're not going to be able to submit the portfolio until all of the prerequisites are uh, met, which is the drawing one, drawing two, 2D, and 3D. Um, and then you have to be enrolled in or have completed the art history courses, the two art history courses. But you can email us if you have uh, specific uh, questions to SVAT advising. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that it was... Um... Because I assumed I spoke to an advisor and they said that I would be good to submit my portfolio in the fall. And I didn't know that I would have to have all of these courses completed before then, but thank you for letting me know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And follow up with us if, um, and we can double check things for you. Um, Kuyana, I think I said, I hope I said your name correctly. Um, my question is there are some pieces I feel like I won't do well, but I'm limited to what. Uh, could be used. Could I ask for assistance prior to submitting my portfolio on what piece may or may not be accepted for the review? I still have pieces that aren't observed, but still following some requirements. Uh, when it comes to the drawing portion, if you uh, want to run things by me or your drawing professor, uh, just to bring in physical examples and if I uh, you want to ask, hey, should I submit this or, or that or give us something to compare and contrast? Um, I don't mind uh, taking a quick second to look at a drawing. It's the same with the design. I look at them all the time too before they go. Thanks. I have no Thanks. objection to that. Thanks. Thanks, Marlene, also for answering the questions, the advising questions in the chat. I appreciate that. Uh, Nicole is asking, should we not use images of pieces that we created in the past for our class, but no longer have? In, is this drawing or design? What are we talking about? I think it's design. I think there's some confusion about um, if people uh, have a mixture of physical pieces that they still have and some photographic evidence of ones that they no longer have. How do they submit that for the all category? I think that's I mean, where all the confusion the, is. Yeah, one of the things yeah. that we did in the past, we used to do this live where you would hang it on the wall and then you didn't have to have that fourth picture. But since we're doing it online, one of the things that was added to the online version was the fourth picture to show that you had these things. If you don't have them, you're gonna just make a picture with all your pictures in there. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's just to show, that they're yours and that you're not sharing your work you know so it's just to show that you own it or that's yours i mean i haven't had anybody that put three pictures in there i've always had like one maybe one sculpture and then two pictures or two sculptures and one picture that that's all the time what we're trying to do is like to show that you've that you had them, you know what I mean? That they belong to you. I, and like I said, that last picture doesn't have to be pretty. It's not about showing off the work. It's just proving that you had those three items. Um, 
it's not really going to make a big difference to me you know if, if you if the work is there and i see that the work is there in the photos and you did the design work then i don't have an issue with that i don't think anybody else would either but we have had in the past where people try to you know borrow things from each other and so i you know i understand why they ask for this i did not personally ask for it but they it's something that they have chosen to do so i would put in what you have and if you only have three pictures in the end, put those three photographs together that show you have those three photos together even, you know? Um, when it comes to when you're putting your work in, the thing that we don't wanna see, I know I don't wanna see in 2D is paintings from your painting class. I don't wanna see sculptures from narrative sculpture. Those are not from your foundation classes. This is a foundations um, studio art portfolio. So you're gonna have design one, design two, and then your drawings, but you're not going to bring in things, you know, like, oh, I have a mosaic that I made at such and such a place. No, that's not part of the program. So, you, I mean, you know, we're not looking for that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Crystal's asking, are there any other examples of uh, of the three D design? Can it be can it be made out of other materials or done digitally? Sorry, I may nope. have missed that. Yeah, we already. There's no digital work that you're making digital. I right, you're not making 3D rendering. This is not about animation or gaming or any of that. It's strictly your foundation class. You need to physically make something. So it can be soft sculpture. It can be wire sculpture. It's going to be cl clay. But I don't want to see pottery. I want to see that you use the clay to create something else. You know. But I, the thing is that you have to show that you had something that you did in your foundation class. I don't, whatever school you went to, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and because asking a question on artist interface, um, is the course artist interface a requirement to pass in order to apply for portfolio? No artist interface is not required for portfolio. There's another question here regarding, um, uh, I think it's another image. It says, so if one doesn't exist anymore, but you have the other two physically, is it okay to submit it? I think that's still referring to the design yeah. uh, pictures if they don't have their work or their piece. Um, okay, let's see here. Isabel is asking, um, were all of the 2D design examples from the UCF program are are there any examples from other universities available? If uh, if you mentioned that already, I apologize. I don't have any from, I only had like one 2D color one from some another school, but all the other ones are from UCF. I don't usually collect someone's work from a portfolio review if they're, you know, so it, I don't have examples of that, but I do know that I have seen other color theory projects from other community colleges and other secondary colleges that I have passed, but I've, and I even had a couple of students that had uh, AP classes and had great work, you know, but then you have to just submit it and see what you have to show for it, you know. Uh, Bethany is asking for the design portion. Will it reflect? Will it reflect poorly on my portfolio if I have more representational uh, work rather than non-representational and abstract? My abstract work isn't the best, but I want to make sure that all that I have all of the requirements. I'm not gonna. I mean, I know that some schools don't teach classification. You know, so I get that. So you could have like three separate pieces that are representational, just not the same object three times, you know, three separate items. But I I think that if you have something that's abstract, let's see it, put it there, you know. Uh, the last question I see in the chat is, what if my 3D class had us do a 3D printer project? Oh, all right. So they actually have the 3D image. I mean, they have the sculpture. I mean, I've had people do the sculptures and I've had them also do the um, resin ones as well. They can be added in. Yes. But not a digital, not your rendering that you did like for a uh, 3D painting project, you know, it has to be the picture of the three dimensional object. Thank you. I don't see any other um, questions in the chat. Again, feel free to uh, 
use your mic or uh, unmute yourself and ask your questions or put your hands up um, with the reactions button and or put your message in the chat or your question in the chat. Can I submit a project from Design Intensive? Um, yes, absolutely. Because if you've done Design Intensive, if you're in Design Intensive now, and you've not done portfolio, I have already suggested that those students definitely apply during the time they're in the class. So you're going to have projects there, which are from 2D and 3D. So you should be able to submit them. Thank you. Aisha, you can go ahead with your question. Do you both of the art history classes have to be from UCF? Uh, no, if you've completed them elsewhere, that's fine. Well, I'm taking the, um, which one is it? The 2050 now. So I have to complete that before I can submit my portfolio. You can submit it if you have, come, if you're enrolled in it now, you can submit it, uh, your portfolio. If you have completed the 2051 already, both okay. must be, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, Aisha? Yes. Um, so I took design like about a year ago, two years ago, and I two of my 3Ds got damaged. So I had to check them in our move. So I do have photos of everything that I submitted. Um, I'm previously a Valencia student, but I'm already been taking classes at UCF. But one of them that got damaged the professor actually wanted us to take it in a creative spot. So I literally took a picture of it in the grass. <laughs> and I know we're supposed to have some type of neutral background and I'm like kind of freaking out, but it goes like, you can still see the design of it. Okay. But I don't, I don't have it no more. All right. The thing is that, yeah, you can probably, I mean, I've seen people do that too, but I, I know that the only person I actually did not give good mark to is somebody who put all of their structure, all, put individual items on their Superman sheets in their bed. So, oh, no, 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 no. The so other that's <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to look at this. So, <laughs> you know, if it's just one, one of them and it's in the grass, let's see what it is, you know? Yeah, I put it in the grass and in the flowers to make because it's a, a nature versus okay. world destruction type thing so i put it in the grass and in the flowers but i think the grass one you'll actually be able to see maybe more of the design element of it and, and the other two yes <laughs> the other two i took a gray bed sheet to have a neutral background so it's sorry it's a bed sheet but it's gray it's not All spider -Man. Right. okay no i mean this Super was red. like <laughs> full on a bed messed up bed and then just laying oh. in, the, in these crumpled sheets no like that doesn't go I, that that you know i don't want to see that and i know i tell i tell my students all the time i don't want to see the sheets i don't want to see laura ashley i don't want to see the gravel and the thing i even when i was teaching drawing people would lay their pictures right on that drawing floor and i would see more tape and gray floor than i would see the actual drawing and i'm like no you know so yeah, you have to think about your pictures. That's really important too. This is for portfolio for here, but you should start being, saving every one of your images because you're going to pull from all different kinds of portfolios all the time. I have like six different kinds of portfolios that I work from all the time and I have to keep pulling things in and out and using them, you know? So don't toss them, mm -hmm. save them. Um, the last question I had with um, design was that last photo, because I'm missing the two, do I just open up like a document and collab all three of the photos that I have into one document? You're, like, gonna take it, you're gonna put them on a table and take a photograph of those, okay? And then you're just loading that photograph. Got it, okay, just wanna make sure. All right, thank you. Okay. There's a question here. Um, is the process different for current high schoolers? Um, I am not sure if you have completed your foundations or the 2D, 3D, and drawing one and drawing two, um, if you're currently enrolled in high school. Um, but if you have completed those, you can definitely submit the portfolio if you're enrolled in the two art history or if you've completed it. 
If not, you'd have to wait until you finish those uh, drawing one, drawing two, 2D and 3D, and then be enrolled in the art history courses to submit the portfolio. Um, okay. Let me just do this other two questions and then we'll go to Joshua. Um, my 3D class never had me make represent representational 3D piece. Could I submit my two abstract works and one non-representational -representation work or does it have to be one of each? No, submit what you have. Yeah, just submit the work you have. Okay. Um, Joshua, go ahead with your question. Okay, so for putting everything all together, do we have to put like a cover title on the first page of the uh, portfolio, like our first name? No, bald? no. These are going not going to be a like you're not putting a PDF together and loading a PDF. There's going to be a space for image one, load it. Image two, load it. Image three, load it. Image four, load it. Then you know, then you go to three D. You're going to do the same thing. In drawing, you're going to have five sections. And then one for the all. So you have six images to load. It's not like you're put, like I said, it's not a PDF you're doing. You are loading all of these individual images. The best shot is to make sure you're ready, that those files are ready to go. Because, like Wahida had already mentioned, that it's not going to be able, to, you're not going to be able to go back and change something. Or if you forgot to load something, you can't reopen it and load it. So you got to be ready to go, one shot. Okay, then I guess I answered my other question too, because I actually changed my major from emerging media on the graphic design track to here. And when I was loading it, not thinking that I, um, I, because uh, I forgot that I didn't pass one of the classes that are required to uh, upload it. It said that I had to write in like a little passage or something, double space. That's, that's graphic design portfolio. Graphic design portfolio was set up in a, in a uh, PowerPoint print layout. And then you do put a cover page and you're writing a page on there about what you need or why, why do you want to be in that program? But this is not, this is the studio art one. This is not about writing and you're just going to load your images. Okay. I thought, I thought that had something to do with it or something um, like uh, it was going to be related. And um, when, um, when I take a, uh, when I like uh, do, uh, do the pictures have to be, um, if I can, I just load up to Photoshop and put like a black back um border background around it. You should just photograph them with the background on it, not try to load it in there and digitally change it. It's like if somebody took a painting class, and we I've seen this too. You go in there, you do like the bags in the beginning painting class, and then somebody tries to to desaturate it and make it a black and white image. We know it's from painting. We know that you already did that digitally. That doesn't work. Okay, so you don't you just upload the uh the image Get a nothing piece of phone core black phone core or something and just photograph it on that you know what i mean yeah what what if i don't have a black phone core board and i need like a black background of some kind no it doesn't it could be gray it could be right it has to be a neutral background just not super, okay okay just not you all right so as long as it's a neutral background i'm fine okay um thank you i got a couple more questions but i'll let someone else have a chance um, we actually <clears throat> answered this one question here, where there'll be an information session for graphic design portfolio as well. Yes, we yeah. will be having um, information sessions for graphic design, character animation, and experimental animation. I don't have dates on those of yet as of yet, but once they are um, once the dates are confirmed, we will post them on the um, portfolio website for those portfolios. And we will be sending emails out also to um, the students. Um, and if you have any other questions, go ahead and raise your hand or unmute yourself or put it in the chat. I guess I'll keep going. Um, if, if we have our best drawings that are, um, that are just from homework and stuff, um, like I, I remember that uh, for spring break, we were allowed to take pictures of, uh, of drawings that were hung up and copy them. Are we allowed mm -hmm. to submit those or? Yeah, no? as long as um, you're submitting your copy of it and not uh, the original. Sure. Yeah, if you do a drawing of a drawing, as long as you created it, you can put it in your portfolio. Okay, well, I mean, how, how do I know that you'll know the the difference. I mean, I'm not saying that it's well. It's, uh, usually, um, okay. We're gonna 
most of the drawing professors do the copy assignment for people. Uh, we're not going to fall to, we can tell the difference between the original. It, we normally go to the original. Uh, we have like maybe five that we'll request people do copies of. So we know those drawings pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. We know the originals intimately, so we'll be able to tell, uh, especially since the older ones are uh, the paper is probably yellowing and uh, right. we've been we've been telling people to copy them for years. So we'll be able to tell. OK. And is is variety a huge concern? Like, can I put in other like than my two or three figurative drawings? Can I do like maybe two skulls? So uh, we do want some variety. We want to know that you understand the drawing one concepts and the drawing two concepts. Uh, so of the five, you can have any number of any examples, as long as you have five, um, we need to know that you can draw the figure well enough that will allow you into the intermediate class, which is an anatomy based course. If you can't draw the figure from observation, we don't want to overload you with the anatomical information. So if you show us that you're ready for more information on the figure uh that'll suffice if you show that in one drawing fine if you show that in two fine if you show that in all five fine we also are looking that you understand the drawing one concepts that you can draw uh in perspective that the the boxes are in perspective right so um you don't have to show that in every drawing we just have to see that you understand the concept somewhere in those five images um okay I'll, um, I feel like, I feel like that I have a couple more questions, but I'm going to hang back for a few more seconds so that someone else have a chance probably. Yes, thank you. Um, so there is a question here, um, from Kevin regarding your, um, experimental animation and your catalog here. Um, I just dropped the SVAT email address in the chat. Please email us and set up an appointment, um, for advising and we'll discuss your options with you. Um, uh, when you email us for an advising appointment, please let us, let us know if you want in person or phone appointment um, and what days and times you're available. Thank you. I already have a uh, appointment okay. before. Okay, awesome. All right, we'll, we'll definitely discuss all that with you then. Have we answered yeah. Kiliana's question? Uh, she said. Forth? Yeah, she said she had it answered already, but you can go ahead okay. and answer it if you need Just to. for the beginning of it, just um, so the beginning of it is, I think I've missed it, but mm -hmm. would it be possible to use the individual pictures and assemble them into a single image instead of all drawings? So we've talked about it a lot from sculpture, but I just want to say it for drawing. So in the sixth image, right, not the five individual drawings, but the sixth one that shows them all together, you can either photograph all five of those drawings physically together in the room with a neutral background, or you could make a Photoshop document or a paint document on your computer and just have all five of those images next to each other uh, and just crop it so that there's not a bunch of negative space uh, in your paint file or Photoshop file. And you could submit that as well. Thank you. Uh, there's a question here. If I have one multi-paper drawing, how would I go about submitting that? By multi-paper, I'm not quite... Okay, do you mean that uh, it, it expands beyond one piece of paper and you've connected them all together? I'm going to assume that that's what you mean. Um, yeah, sure, you can submit that. Uh, you might just want to photograph it from a higher vantage point uh, or farther away from the wall and then um, just edit the photo so that you're cropping out most of the negative space. You don't have to include any of the negative space. It's not, it's not a three-dimensional object, right? So I, we don't need to set up a nice black background or anything like that. You can just edit the photo and crop it so that there's no room showing in the background and it's only your drawing. Uh, you, could, you could do that. Um, Kilian had another question. If I wanted to check, uh, if I wanted to check by what the professors before I submit my portfolio, where can I seek you out under a set up an appointment to meet with you? I'm assuming that's with um, Professor Lucy or Star. 
So for drawing, I'm on campus four days a week. Uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, I teach from 11 a.m. to 4.50. Um, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I teach from 2.30 to 8.15 at night. Uh, you can come into any of my classes. I always teach in the small drawing room this semester. Uh, you can bug me anytime. Same for me. I'm here four days a week as well. Most of the, uh, I am here. I teach classes from 11 until about 5.30 to 6 o'clock on every day. But like Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning, I also have office hours. So you can always just pop by. My office is 115 in the VAB building. But you can bring your work into my classrooms as well. And I will just lay it out on the wall and I will say, yes, this goes. No, this doesn't go. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. I'll explain why too, so that you understand why. Tell you don't don't use it or yes use it. Okay. Thanks. Isabella has a question. What is the difference between non-representational and abstract sculpture? Well, for example, if you your first one was a representational, it represented a duck, and then your abstract would be an abstraction of the duck. You would still see the duck but it would not be the same as the first sculpture. There's a million of things that you can look up. Picasso's guitar is one of them, you know? And then when it gets to non-rep, you've taken the duck away and you've only created something with the principles and elements of design from your work. You're building from that. You're not building a duck anymore, you know? Uh, Crystal wants, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was gonna like ask because um, was that part of the UCF program because I did 3D in um, another institution. So would I still have to do that for the- um... No, if you have three separate sculptures, load them, take the pictures of them, load them into each one of those first three pictures and then put all three together on a table and photograph that for your fourth image. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, Crystal wanted to know if you all will be doing virtual meetings also, because she's quite far from campus. I have done that too. I have. Yeah, I could do that. If they want to do it during my office hours, I can set up a virtual meeting okay. or design. Yeah. My office hours are also via Zoom on Fridays, not this Friday, but any other Friday you can ask me. Uh, or, um, if uh, just a side note, sorry, if I just popped in my head. If you're looking for good examples for the drawing portion and you can't find me, the entire upstairs section of the VAB right now has good example drawings in the hallway. So if you want to just look at what we're looking for, if you just want more examples than what you saw today, um, you could just go to the second story and look at the drawings that are hanging. Um, 99.9% .9 of them are good example drawings. Every once in a while, we'll show what we call a turnaround drawing, which is like a bad example that they did in the first week next to the best thing they made all semester. Those will be obvious. Okay. Thanks. There's a question here um, from Caesar. Uh, for one of my 2D design value projects, it involved making three separate drawings. If I were to upload that one, um, that one that count as one or that count as one or um one of the three required for the 2d portion i think i totally messed up that question it's from caesar do you see it debbie okay say that again i'm sorry i had somebody at my door here uh, it says for one of my 2D design value projects, it, it involved making three separate drawings. If I were to upload that one, that count all as three of one, those, yes, three. because that's not only showing value on that project, but it's also a time base giving a beginning and an end. So yes, that one image of all three of those are one project. Okay. Then there's a the next question. Um, could I submit a piece from a printmaking class for 2D? No not part of your foundation. It has to come from your foundation classes, not from printmaking, not from painting, not from sculpture. It comes from 2D, 3D, 
and your drawing classes, only foundation courses, wherever you took them, okay? We need to know that you understand those principles and elements of design and composition, so. Okay. Uh, there's a follow-up here from Caesar. It says, if I were to upload that one, would it count as one of the three? That would be one of your three images. If he's talking about the value project, that would be one of his three images. You'd need one there that's black and white. Then you'd have one color theory project and one other project that he would love. I don't think I see any other questions in the chat at the moment. We just have a few minutes remaining. Um, so if you have any questions, Definitely put them in the chat or unmute yourself and ask them. So I guess I'm a little confused about um, like, what do you mean by like, we can do it on a table? Does the table have to be a neutral, um, neutral color? No, like the third one, the fourth picture that you're adding for design, right? You have three separate images for each one of those projects, three separate projects. And yeah. then you put them all together and just photograph them to show that you have all three of them. It can be on a table, it can be on the floor, it can be like set up where you're putting all three of them together in that same background in the black background kind of thing. But you're just photographing them all together. It's not about, I'm not grading that as part of, you know, we're not choosing that picture as not part of your portfolio. It's just to show that you have the items. The other three pictures are going to be what everyone's picking at, looking at, you know? Okay, so the picture is all together. The background doesn't matter, just the fact that you have them all together. Exactly. Okay. And um, um, with, um, with, with, like you said, Professor Lucy, we can, um, we can uh, Photoshop them, Photoshop the, like take a picture of the drawings and put them on Photoshop. Um, and uh, does, um, does, there, does there have to be borders in between them or they can just be close together? They can be close together. Um, and just uh, to specify, just in case anyone was wondering, uh, just use Photoshop to group the images together. Don't use it to photo edit them. Um, but yeah, so uh, you don't have to have margins between them. You can if you want to, if you want little black borders between, um, or you can not have borders. Just don't crop your images. Just uh, show like the full length of the piece of paper in all of them. Okay, Sh show them regardless if they say the day homework drawing. Uh, yeah, that table. won't hurt you at all. Okay. Um, all, all right. Um, I'll if um, if uh, no one asks any questions, I'll mute myself and then I'll think of more probably. I do have a question here. Just for the drawings that I have hung up in the hallway, would it be okay if I took pictures of them? in that position or would you recommend that I take them down and take pictures of them in a different location? If the lighting is good enough, I know the lighting is kind of spotty up there. Um, there's gonna be hot spots and uh, cold spots. If you can get an image of them, if it's on an eye level, uh, sure. But if you're taking a picture of one like above your head and it's messing with the perspective of the image, I would take it down and photograph it somewhere more advantageous. Um, ultimately, I won't know where you photographed it. I'll just know the quality of the image taken and the image made. So good drawing, well photographed. Uh, it depends on uh, how good your camera is and whether or not it's in a good spot for lighting issues. Um, any other questions? We just have mm -hmm. about nine minutes left. <laughs> uh, if you have questions after the presentation's over, definitely email the SVAD advising email or the portfolio email. I'll put the portfolio one in the chat also. And then I can direct them to whoever we need to direct them to to get them answered for you. I just posted the studio art portfolio email address. So if you have specific questions regarding design or drawing, please email it to that address and I will um, send it out appropriately. If it's any questions regarding the courses you've taken, uh, are you ready for portfolio based on what you've transferred in or not? Um, you can email SVAT advising for that.
Any other questions? Uh, if we finish the required art courses in spring, would we have to wait until the fall to apply? Yes, if you're going to be enrolled in um, drawing one, drawing two, 2D or 3D in the spring semester, you'll have to wait until fall to apply. All righty. It seems like we're out of questions. Last call for questions. Awesome. Uh, looks like we have one. If we happen to fill portfolio but pass both intensives already, can we still uh, pick spring classes? Uh, yes, Jessica, you can definitely. Um, when we send you your email, we will have that in. Uh, you probably would have to write us back and let us know that you did pass the um, intensive, uh, but uh, definitely reach out to us after you receive your email um, once we send the results out. If I feel like that maybe for my non-representational project, there's something that I have to fix about at the last second, like maybe the type of uh, adhesive I used, should I go about that and fix it or? If you think you have a problem and you need to fix it, I would fix it before you photograph it, load the photo because it's, you know, you want it to be your best thing that you put in there. You don't want it to be falling apart or having glue leaking out of it, you know? Okay. Uh, Crystal is asking, are great part of this portfolio or no? Um, we are looking at the CR better in all of your foundation courses for the portfolio. So uh, yes, technically grades are a part of the um, portfolio. You have to have a CR better in drawing one, drawing two, 2D, 3D, and the two art history courses um, for you to pass, pass for you to be eligible to submit the portfolio. Uh, when will the results of the portfolio be emailed or posted? It's actually in the website. It is October 12th, which is a Wednesday. By the end of the day, you will, at least at five o'clock, before five, right before five, we'll have those emailed out to you. It will be emailed to the um, email address that you use to submit your portfolio. You're welcome. All right. Uh, we have about five minutes to wrap it up. Anything else before we close? And again, feel free to email us with any questions you can think of after this. And we will have um, the session posted on the portfolio website, the Studio Art Portfolio website. Um, it will be, uh, just give us a few days to clean it up before we post it. All right, if there's uh, no more questions, you guys have an amazing weekend. Um, and we will be looking forward to seeing your portfolios. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.